It's the Orioles on Masset and the first weekend of the baseball season here at Camden Yards as the Tampa Bay Rays come to town as the Orioles enter division play. Raise the nose for three. And the Orioles, of course, coming in with a three-game win streak with the sweep of the Minnesota Twins. They are trying to go 4-0 to start a season for the first time since 2011. And as always, when you face the Tampa Bay Rays, you are talking about pitching. Last season in the series against Tampa Bay, the numbers were about pitching. Take a look. The Orioles came away with a series win 10-9. You take a look at those batting averages, 214 for the Orioles, yet they won by a game. The home run department. Rays have the better of it by three runs per game not a lot 3.9 3.6 these were tight ball games last season and that ERA for both of the ball clubs is very good and uh, Mike Bordick no reason to believe that will change this year no no both teams uh, actually very close games to start the season the Orioles swept the twins and each game was decided by two runs or less and of course the Rays the same way against the Blue Jays down at the Trop. now it seems like the history between the Rays and the Orioles have always been close even in their career they're like Orioles have a lead 158 to 157 in games one so it's always going to be a close contest but you know the Rays they uh, they had problems scoring runs really run production so they went out and got some bopper bats to hopefully put them over the edge score a few more runs last year 94 games decided by two runs or less yeah that's that's tight baseball Steve Pierce one of those names former Oriole we uh, may see him he'll be coming off the bench if he does in this game but he certainly adds a little pop to their lineup when he's in there he sure does you know uh, he he had a monster year breakout season for Pierce back in 2014 when he was a member of the Orioles hit 21 home runs so they're hoping that kind of production carries over with Tampa. He's always had great success down at the Trop picked up Logan Morrison and uh, Corey Dickerson as well for the extra boost in the lineup and uh, tonight Chris Tillman will get a second shot at it. Chris of course had a magnificent two innings then the weather closed in on the opener they couldn't bring him back and everybody kind of on the edge of their seats right now going are we going to see that Chris Tillman in his second start. Well, I, everybody hopes so because uh, he was so impressive the first two innings of the year. Uh, faced six batters, five punch outs. His fastball was 94 to 95 miles an hour. He had command of his uh, off speed pitches, his slider, his curveball, his changeup were incredible. They're looking for the same tonight. So it'll be Tillman against Archer and the Orioles against the Rays set to go on this Friday night when we come back. On Masson is brought to you by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. 
and by Chesapeake Employers Insurance, a workers' compensation insurance company. Few clouds in the air here at Oriole Park at Camden Yards for this one. Our VGE home game time temperature is a very cool 50 degrees. A little breeze blowing out towards left to start. VGE home, Baltimore's home team for heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical. Why would you call anyone else? Starting lineup for this Tampa Bay team, Forsyth, Morrison, Longoria, Dickerson, Jennings, and Miller. Souza, who's off to a booming start. Kiermaier, the gold glove, platinum glove center fielder. And Hank Conger will be doing the catching. You see the 29 home runs lifetime Longoria against the O's. And let's take a look at Chris Tillman's pitch arsenal this season. The fastball, 68% of the time, and it was an overpowering fastball on opening day, 94 to 95. He was locating it all over the zone, going to the top when he needed to, inside, outside. He was cutting it. He could also spin the baseball. A breaking ball was on. He had the big curve and a slider working. Of course, only two innings of work, nothing for an earned run average, but the five punch outs. And six batters face Tillman looking to uh, obviously get a little bit deeper. The opening day was that. I guess it was an hour and ten minute rain delay. Mm. We had to sit through. So Chris Tillman will look for a win here, coming uh, right back into action. But Showalter kind of joking about how anxious he was to get back in the bump, saying he wanted to pitch last night <laughs> if if he could have. But it'll be here against Tampa Bay. Forsyth will lead it off. Shift is on. Logan Forsyth. There are the numbers he has uh, put up so far this season for this Tampa Bay team. Tampa Bay two and two after the four game set with Toronto. Tillman's delivery is in there for a strike, and we are underway. Chris carries a lifetime five and nine mark into this ball game against the Tampa Bay Rays. Obviously, with the 19 games these teams play, they see a lot of one another in division play. Forsythe taking it away one ball one strike out. Well Forsythe uh, going to be the table setter this year. He put a lot of weight on his shoulders had a monster breakout season last year. I'm looking for him to carry that over and get on base. And he does base hit up the middle. So that one's a base hit shift or no shift. And Forsythe gets his seven hits and 21 at bats against Tillman. Well, let's take a look at the Orioles defense behind Tillman here. Ryan Old getting the start again in left field with Jones down. Rickard will get the start in center and Trumbo over in right field. Manny Machado getting the start at shortstop. J.J. Hardy's calf bothering him today. He's available. He might get in there, but uh, right now Manny Machado, the starting shortstop. Scope at second. Flaherty will be at third. Davis at first. And Matt Weeders back behind the plate. Machado, of course, came up as a shortstop. You never have to ask him twice about going out there to play short. He is ready to go. And they will put the shift on here, bringing the third baseman, Ryan Flaherty, over to the second base side of the bag. And here is Logan Morrison. Morrison, their first baseman, will take the pitch up high. Forsyth on at first. Morrison, see the numbers with the 17 home runs and 54. RBIs for him. He can move the ball around. The Orioles leave Manny Machado over there on that left side in order to take the bunt away from him. He's not had a hit in 10 at bats this spring. Runner goes, hit and run, and it will be foul back. For the ball club that struggles as much as Tampa Bay does to score runs. Kevin Cash is going to move some people when he feels he's got a chance to try and just get things going. Oh, absolutely. Uh, he's going to start utilizing the hit and run a little bit more. He does have a little more team speed this year and guys that can handle the bat. But it's all about run production and uh, putting the pressure on early. Tampa, like most teams, would like to make the first mark. Pitch on the way to Abe, man. A breaking ball that's going to be down low to Logan Morrison. He was acquired during the offseason in a six player deal. With Seattle, he played 146 games, career high for him with Seattle last season. Responded with the 17 home runs, the second most that he has had in his career. So that's one of the added bats we were talking about that they're hoping to get some more offense out of. Two ball, one strike delivery, runner not going down to first base. It is a fair ball. They get one relay and they turn the double play. How about that? And a great decision to go to second rather than step on the bag at first. Wow, that is a great play by Chris Davis at first base. He's been playing sensational defense down on the corner. 
beautiful heads up play giving it up to Ryan Flaherty knowing the speed of Morrison that is the key to this play he could have easily stepped on first but maybe not get the speed at second base and Forsyth petty decision there by Chris Davis and a nice turn by Ryan Flaherty. Now some question as cash comes out I think he's talking about where the base runner was or whether the ball was fair or foul I'm not sure which he went down to first base umpire Dana DeMuth who is the crew chief to have a word with him and uh, heads back in. Boy that is an unusual double play that's a three five three. You may never see that again. Yeah exactly because the way the shift was on when you got Ryan Flaherty third baseman moving over to the other side of second his responsibility is to take that throw. That's uh, an outstanding play. So with that there are two down and here is Evan uh, Longoria Longoria obviously the big numbers we showed you against the Orioles in his career this is the 126th game that he is playing in against the Orioles 29 home runs and make it 30 way back in left field not even bothering to move and goodbye home run. He now has hit more home runs against the Orioles than any other team. He had been tied with the Yankees at 29 prior to that bomb, and Tampa Bay's got a one-nothing lead. Yeah, for one reason or another, he really sees the ball well out of Chris Tillman's hand, and uh, he's put up some serious numbers. A lot of at bats as well. His 55th plate appearance here, and he gets on the inside fastball. Now Longoria, an off year. Power wise last season he's looking to uh, redeem himself and if he takes hacks like that he certainly will. So against Tillman uh, that's the seventh home run he has hit against Chris Tillman with a 327 batting average in his career and he really launched that one coming at two down here in the first inning. And the pitch will be taken by Dickerson there D.H. Now we had mentioned the other night. The Rays have the longest streak going. It's up to 19 consecutive ball games now where they have had at least one home run in each of those 19 games. And that started against Baltimore back on September 20. And in fact, not only is it a record for the ball club, but it is the longest streak by any team since Seattle had a 23 game streak back in 2013. So the Orioles under Buck Showalter, you expect home runs. The other side with Kevin Cash's Rays, not so much. No. <laughs> but they're the ones who got the string going. One one delivery on the way and going for one right there was Dickerson. Yeah, Dickerson, another one of those power bats uh, brought over from Colorado over the offseason. Uh, they felt so strongly about grabbing some power. They gave up Jake McGee out of their bullpen, a power left handed arm. See Dickerson's power zone last year. Uh, had a pretty good season hitting 10 home runs but he's been hampered by uh, plantar fasciitis that's uh, the arch of your foot slowed him down for only 65 games last year back in 2014 though 24 home runs so health is going to be a key for Dickerson for sure. Well he's already had a couple of solo shots this year in fact the only two hits that he has he's two for 13 have been solo home runs this year for Chris Tillman he gave up 20 home runs last season. That one is launched in the air down the line to right field heading to the scoreboard that will hit now near the bottom Trumbo it went by him he comes back to get it though Dickerson was thinking about trying to go to third but Trumbo recovered in time and it'll be a double for Dickerson. Yeah, had a pretty good pitch there not a bad breaking ball from Chris Tillman take a look though off the wall tough right field to play here and it just gets a big hard kick past Trumbo unfortunately Dickerson just holding his ground at second base his first double of the year. So another scoring opportunity this all coming after the fine double play took that leadoff single by Forsyth off the diamond. Now Dickerson in scoring position and Jennings Jennings has Desmond Jennings has had a hit in each of the first four games of the season straight up defense against him. Tillman's delivery to him down low for a ball. Jennings has had exactly the opposite in success against Tillman as Longoria has. He's two for 21 in his career against Chris. So far in the season, Tampa Bay hitting 207 with runners in scoring position. 
last year. This was a problem area for the ball club as a team they hit only 244 and that was last in the American League. Yeah they're looking for some uh, added thump. They were hampered by some injuries. Jennings uh, missed a lot of time and even in spring training this year Jennings was out with some knee injury. So they're looking for him to add a little more consistency in this lineup and of course uh, team speed. Jennings with a two ball one strike count. You can see from the clothing being worn by uh, the players it's layers night here as it is cool that breezes makes it even cooler blowing out to left field Longoria has got that up on his head and had it on with the helmet on top of it. Two ball one strike pitch on the way and he got fooled on that one very late swing. Yeah, good slider here now Tillman known for the big over the top curveball but he's Thrown some quality sliders did on opening day. That's a pretty good one as well. And driving the ball downhill, a big time key for Chris Tillman to stay tall on the mound. He's 6'6. He creates a really good angle, but at times he uh, gets into his back leg a little too much and doesn't quite stay as tall. His velocity in game one was up almost two miles an hour from the average last year. He averaged a 93 in the two innings that he pitched on opening day. He averaged a little over 91. Last season, so the velocity was really there in that opening day start. Three two, runner at second, there are two down, and a step off by Tillman. Well, Tillman's at 94 here in the early going of this ball game, and I know a lot of fans remember uh, in the past, it took him a couple innings to get loose. It seemed he'd start in the high 80s, low 90s, and then he'd get into the mid 90s with his fastball as the game progressed. Good to see uh, uh, good velocity early in the game. And he will walk him. So Tillman after the double play a home run a double and a walk. And the inning continues here in the first for the Tampa Bay Rays. Interesting that uh, in that game yesterday with Evaldo Jimenez and Phil Hughes throwing strikes they combined uh, there were 19 batters struck out and there were no walks. And it is the second major league game this year in which that has happened where there have been no walks issued the Cubs did it against the Angels. With a lot of strikeouts. It only happened 22 times last year, according to the Elias Sports Bureau. And already we got a couple of them on the board here this season. And it is foul back by Miller. This is Brad Miller, their shortstop, who's going to be there on a regular basis. They're trying to, Kevin Cash cutting down on the number of platoon situations that Joe Madden used to have out of necessity with this ball club. And uh, this season trying to solidify positions a little bit more. So you get the uh, guys in there every day. Miller gets away and the runners are going to advance. As Weeder's able to block it, that'll be a wild pitch in the dirt. And now there are two in scoring position. Well, this uh, breaking ball from Chris Tillman has some serious bite on it. I mean, it bites just before it gets to home plate. I think it catches Weeders off guard as well. Miller almost swinging on that. Kicks away and now a couple runners in scoring position. This is a big at bat early in the ball game. Miller last year hit 257 in these situations. Two down, 1-1. One, one. And a swing and a miss over the top and a good one. That one fell off the table for Tillman. Yeah, nice change uh, all through spring training. Chris Tillman's changeup was a plus plus off speed pitch. Uh, primarily just going heater change until he could get the feel of the breaking ball. Everything kind of came together for him uh, at the end of spring training, and now everything working very well. One two delivery on the way, and he gets him with high heat. So Tillman gets out of the inning. The home run by Longoria. One of two hits in the inning. Two left on. Rays lead it. One to nothing.
for the evening here at Oriole Park. Let's take a look at the lineup for the Orioles brought to you by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. At the top, his name's Joey. Rymo Machado, Davis Trumbo and Wheatus, Alvarez Scope and uh, Flaherty. And for record, look at that hits in all three and his Major League first home run as well. Well, let's take a look at Chris Archer's pitch arsenal this season. The fastball 56% of the time, and it is a good one. Easy velocity coming out of that right arm. 92 to 96 with the heater. It has a two seamer as well. Power slider to go along with it, and the occasional change. Mostly lefties will see that, although in his last start, he did flip in a couple to righties. 360 earned run average, 238 overall batting average. And at the top of the order, where he was in the ball game last night. Joey Record is making the start in center field with Adam Jones still out available to play in the game. Adam with some soreness around the rib cage muscles. Pitch will be taken outside and there he is. Like Joe Wilder said uh, could put him in if needed in the ball game but two in a row now not in the starting lineup. One ball one strike count from Archer. And that's a strike in the outside corner, one he won't forget. Yeah, first career home run. Look at the head position there. Boy, he's looked good at the plate. Most of his hits come in the opposite way, but he set this one up and the big ball out into the Orioles' bullpen. One two delivery on the way, had a reach for it and fouls it back. Take a look at our Maryland Live Casino inside the numbers. You know, five plus hits and uh, one or more home runs in first three major league games. Willie Tasby back in 1958, a Orioles outfielder at five hits and a homer hammer. Hammonds did it. Manny Machado, of course, back in 2012. And there he is, Joey Rickard this season, starting the year off with the five hits and the long ball. Takes the pitch up high. So working it into a two ball, two strike count. Archer, the opening day starter, who uh, piled up the strikeouts against Toronto but took the loss. Three runs, five hits, five innings, 12 strikeouts in five innings. 2 2 delivery on the way. Ground ball that slowly hit. Tough play. Miller up. Not going to get him. That's the speed that he brings to the top of the lineup in an infield single. What a great speed there. Jerry Rickard uh, sniffing it out of the box. And hit it with that kind of speed, gets that extra step. He kind of reaches for this breaking ball, so he's got some momentum going towards the bag. And Miller, clock a little off, uh, not realizing how fast Rickard was down the line. And Rickard able to beat it by half a step. So the Orioles get their leadoff man on, and uh, a threat to go. Behind the plate, Conger, who has the worst numbers imaginable throwing out base dealers. And that's got to be tough for him. Pitch will be taken up high. Incredibly, Conger threw out one, one of 43 attempted base dealers last year. Yeah, hard to believe. I mean, it's just incomprehensible, yet true. Mm. One oak out. And that'll be taken. Reimold, you wonder the effect that has on pitchers, even with Archer's experience about getting the ball to the plate and worrying about the runner on first. Yeah, right. Well, Archer's pretty good. I mean, uh, about average as far as his delivery times to home. Not many attempts even last season off Archer. But yeah, Conger, uh, some trouble. Get a help there, a Forsyth Miller across the bag. There is a big double play. Before they could send the base runner two down. Let's take a look at the Rays defense behind Archer Jennings, Kiermaier, and Sosa Jr. Red hot Sosa Jr. in right field. Miller and Forsyth up for them. Be a double play combination. Longoria and Morrison on the corner, and Conger doing the catching. That'll bring up Matty Machado with Adam Jones out of the lineup. Matty hitting in the third spot, as he did in the ball game last night. Came through with his first home run out of that spot at a two for four in the game last night and obviously he's gotten off to a real good start here this season. He has big time numbers against Archer. He is eight for 19 against the Tampa Bay starter and the pitch taken down low for a ball. And take a look uh, highest average versus Archer now Archer considered to be uh, one of the forerunners or front runners for the Cy Young this year and there's Manny Machado and J.J. Hardy on the board. Archer last year opponents only hit 220 against him. How do you go 12 and 13 
and opponents hit 220. Uh, right. I mean, he just had some of the craziest numbers last year, and on the road he was outstanding. One one delivery on the way just didn't get any runs on the inside corner for strike. That's it bottom line and I think going into the offseason it was probably Archer that said hey let's go out and get some power bats because in 24 of his 34 starts he had three runs of support or less and that's the key and there has only been a handful of pitchers that have had 250 or more strikeouts and had a losing record and Archer one of them last Slow season. Slow ground ball it is foul. How did Longoria know Longoria intentionally let that ball go and didn't touch it or it would have probably been fair and a double at that Yeah, off the end of the bat here and it is hugging the line but at the last second he sees that hop and he makes the decision to pull away look at that just <laughs> going foul right off that inside edge of third base Ed Hickox the umpire and you see him smiling in because he knew he was Going to have real problems if he fielded that trying to get an out. And Hickox was right there on the line, and that just missed hitting the bag. So Manny Machado comes back with a one ball, two strike count. Leading the majors, playing every one of them. One, two delivery off the fist, popped up. Conger back. And will not have a play. Guy will stay at one and two. I'm trying to get that fastball in on Manny Machado. Huh. He must not have seen yesterday's ball game when Manny took a fastball that was probably three inches inside off the plate and was able to pull the hands in tight and square it up for his first home run of the year. Of course, 35 long balls last season. One ball, two strikes, two down. Outfield moves a bit towards right now on the count. Kiermeyer, the center fielder, moved over. One, two delivery. That'll be foul back. Told you Archer with those strikeouts in game one 12 of them he is a strikeout pitcher since the start of last year he's averaged almost 11 strikeouts per nine innings only Chris Sale and Clayton Kershaw have had a higher strikeout average than has Archer over that span of time one two delivery seventh pitch of the at bats going to be bounced Manny Machado. Able to work him here to a two ball, two strike count. And it's really that slider that's his uh, big time pitch. Now he has a great fastball, above average fastball, and you know he can rush it up there over 95 miles an hour, 96 miles an hour. But the slider, he can manipulate that pitch. He can throw it hard, he can throw it really sharp and make it bite into the dirt, soften it up a little bit. You guys have that kind of feel on that slider uh, very effective and able to keep hitters off balance with that pitch. But show all the same before the game he's got two sliders. Um, he can throw one that looks goes across the plane and another that will drop uh, and is able to throw pretty much at will. And there's the heater and there's the K. So Manny Machado going upstairs couldn't get to it. No runs on one hit. No errors. Nobody left on and after one a one nothing Rays lead.
take a look at our American League leaderboard brought to you by Coons.com. Over 2 million vehicles sold and counting. And now this is the starting pitching leaderboard and the Orioles starters uh, right at the top in the American League rankings earned run average 1.29 coming into this ball game. They're first in the earned run or strikeouts per nine innings third base on balls per nine is fourth home runs allowed tied for first. You know Tillman had that great opening day start only lasting two innings though because of the rain delay but Gallardo backed him up with five strong innings then Ubaldo last night seven innings with nine punch ups. And here is Souza who is marching to a home run tune as he's just the third player in Tampa Bay history with three home runs or more in the first four games. Evan Longoria in 2009 put up those kind of numbers. And Steven Seuss is doing it three home runs five RBIs so far. He is three for 12 with a home run lifetime off Tillman. So another long ball hitter in this lineup. 2 0 count. Kiermaier and then Conger bottom third of the order do up 2 0 delivery to him and that's going to be taken up high and we are not seeing the crispness or location that we saw from Tillman in the first two innings of opening day. No not just yet, yet you know but uh, I'm sure it'll come as he settles into this ball game he has popped the fastball up there pretty good a couple times just the breaking ball command which you know for Chris Tillman sometimes it's there sometimes it's not surprised that change up hasn't already come into play because it's been so effective for him. Last year for Seamer 52 percent of the time from Tillman swing and a miss and a good pitch that he buried inside and he goes with the sinker and change and curve almost equally divided for the rest of the pitches that he throws. Three ball two strike count straight away D. And a ground ball up the middle under his glove snared long throw won't be in time on the one hop from Jonathan scope. So Sousa's on with a leadoff single each inning Tampa Bay getting a leadoff single in the first two. Time's running out on your chance to earn exclusive orange carpet benefits by becoming a full or partial season plan member. You save money on single game tickets, the most flexible exchange policy available access to postseason tickets and more. Go to Orioles.com slash season or call 888-848-BIRD. Here is Kiermaier, an amazing accomplishment that in his first full season in the majors, he not only won the gold glove in center in the American League, but won the platinum as the best defensive player at any position in the American League. And uh, now here he is for year two. Yeah, pretty impressive tools out there. Um, every night it seemed like he was making a highlight film play. He has great closing speed. He'll come in and cut down a ground ball and Pretty good arm out there as well, but a sensational outfielder. This allows the uh, corner outfielders to back off a little bit and let him range the gaps. Tillman looking for that ground ball to get a double play here. Kiermaier just two for 16 off Chris. Kiermaier will pop that one up. It'll come back and be over the screen. Now the Chicago Cubs may be wishing, and I say that facetiously, that Dexter Fowler had signed with the Orioles. That collision that he had with Kyle Schwaber. Schwaber's out uh -huh. for the year. Yeah, it was nasty. Both an ACL and an LCL oh, torn. That was so nasty. So the Cubs have a major injury. Throw over a pretty good one. Yeah, Cubs are off to a pretty good start, too. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, we talked about it all through spring training and even coming into this year. I think every major league team is going to be tested with their depth, you know, as if players. Start getting banged up and hurt. Who's going to be able to step in and fill that void? Ground ball to the middle. Jonathan Scope's got the chance. Manny crossed the bag and got him. Close play at first base, and Kevin Cash is asking the home plate umpire to hang on. They want to take a look at the video, but his first chance at short, and he gets so rid of it in a hurry. Oh, barehanded as well, and then let's loose the cannon. Yeah, bang, bang, play. Kiermaier fl flying down the line, and the last two balls put in play. Not too hard. Uh, Chris Tillman, the two seam, were able to get in on Kiermaier, and the same with Sosa Jr. Looks to be out there. Yep. Ball has to be in the back of the glove, and it sure looked like it was, and there will be no challenge on this, and another. Big double play. Orioles now turn two. 
that have uh, mattered taking the leadoff man off in each inning after they had singled. And Manny will smile for three weeks <laughs> on that play alone. Oh yeah. <laughs> Here is Conger, switch hitter, batting ninth, their catcher. That will be taken down low for a ball, the off speed delivery. I was talking with Bobby Dickerson, uh, the Orioles infield coach, before the game, and just asked him about Manny at shortstop tonight. And he said when he was hitting them ground balls, the first three, he looked like he was different. Like uh, he had, he was doing something different out at shortstop. And he stopped for a second. He goes, Manny, what are you doing right now? He said, just act like you're a third baseman in the shift. And then Manny got back into his regular routine, started fielding ground balls the right way. So uh, made Bobby feel a little bit more comfortable. Bobby gave him a round of applause. Shattered bat with a barrel going down to first base. On the shift, that's Ryan Flaherty who makes the play on Conger and only three up, no runs, one hit, no errors. And nobody left on base. It'll be Davis to lead it off when we come back. In our ball game, brought to you by Miller Light. Adam Jones sitting out the second. Scott Kuba, the Oriole hitting coach, talking with him. One nothing lead on the home run by Longoria. Chris Davis will lead it off for the Orioles against Archer. Now, despite all the success Archer has had, he has not won a ball game in his last seven starts. He's gone 0 and 4. Since a win against the Orioles, it was back on August 31st. Since then, seven starts and 0 and 4 record. His ERA has been five and a half mm. over those seven games. Chris Davis goes after it, gets it, center field, deep. Kiermaier going back at the wall, and goodbye, home run into the seats in center. Crush has done it again on the ball game's tied at one. Yeah, you love it, Chris Davis. A uh, couple home runs this season, both uh, center field. He's not trying to do too much, not pulling off the baseball at all, staying through it. Kuhlmeyer got back there and he was wondering when it was going to come down, ended up about 10 rows behind him. So his second home run of the new season. And the Orioles tied the ball game up. As Davis also gets his second career home run against Archer, against whom he is now five for 14, and Chris walloped that one. Here's Mark Trumbo trying to go the other way with it into the seats. We'll take a look at the crusher swing right here, a fastball. He gets the arms extended. It's on the outer third, and look at the finish. The bat head right to the baseball, and then threw it. An extra six inches, and in the classic Chris Davis finish. Well, the team's both using the long ball here in this one, and that will be fouled back. Boy, Trumbull wanted that one. That wasn't going to the opposite field. He was trying to drive that one up into the seats and left. A couple of good healthy cuts here from Trumbull. Chris Davis, his 800th career hit. 
on the second home run of the season. Archer gave up 19 home runs last year, nine of those two left handers. 0 2 delivery, reach for it, swinging bunt down the line. It's fair, it's fair, and an infield single. Roll back onto the fair side of the white line, and Trumbo is on. Wow, Chalk Line's uh, playing some tricks on players here. Early going in this ball game, Longoria letting one go that was in fair territory. This one looks like it's going to go foul. Actually, it was foul, and then it spun back into fair territory, catching Archer off guard. Trumbo picking up another base hit. Buck was talking about that the other day. He said that's the closest to the line that I have seen the grass since I've been here. So if the ball gets on that line, it can get back on that grass in a pretty quick period if it's got that kind of spin on it and once it does that it's going to stay and that's what happened right there. Here is Matt Wieters. Wieters with a four for 15 lifetime off Archer. The Orioles have picked up their third hit putting some hits up on the board. These teams have combined for seven and we're only through uh, an inning and a half. Oh one infield shifted playing him to pull down low Conger makes the nice stop on it. 85 on that delivery 101. Yeah there's the rare change up uh, to a left handed hitter and typically that's when he'll bring out that weapon he isn't as confident obviously as uh, he's in his fastball and slider but showing it at times you can get hitters off guard. That's had a couple of hits aided bats they both been left handed. That one he brings down and in to Wieters and a one ball two strike count. First of three against this. Ray's team the Orioles have Mike Wright scheduled to go in the ball game against Drew Smiley tomorrow. They haven't announced the starter for Sunday yet. Jake Odorizzi scheduled to be on the mound for the day game on Sunday. Lots of concern about the weather for tomorrow night. One two count and that's going to be up and away. So the one thing about starting or a strikeout pitcher like Archer. He ends up throwing a lot of pitches and here he is uh, second inning Matt Wieters working him right now 26 pitches thrown. And you have to work to get a lot of strikeouts at the major league level and I think as time goes by now Archer will probably be uh, the ego might want to keep getting the strikeouts but he want to go deeper into ball games the early contact game that one inside and got him that is strikeout number two. In the ball game, Wieters retired. Well, sometimes you get away with mistakes. Here, a cement mixer up in the zone, and uh, Wieters' eyes just got a little too big on that one. So the bot bat had just dropped underneath. 27-year-old right-hander, 32 and 33 in his major league career. Here is Alvarez. Alvarez. Numbers for last season, looking for his first hit as an Oriole. Good scoop by Conger. Alvarez 0 for 8. He has uh, picked up some walks, four of them, and four strikeouts early on. But he just wants to get a knock. Oh, yeah. Get he this sure thing does. going. Well, and you wonder, we talked about it a little bit in the Twins series, um, how not being on the field. Possibly could affect Alvarez because he came up as a third baseman last year, moved over to first, and now you know, there's not going to be a lot of playing time in the field just yet for Alvarez. So primarily in that DH position. DH is is something you have to learn how to get yourself through a game, and uh, he's not used to doing that. It's most of the DHs will go back underneath into the hitting cages and take swings and work out a formula for right. when to do that in the course of a game just to stay ready. But you got to find what makes you comfortable, and Alvarez will be working on that as a DH. 2 0 count, delivery to him towards second base. Forsyth Miller, a little low, but worse than up with it. And uh, each team has turned a double play in each of the first two innings. The Orioles, though, get the big blast as Chris Davis delivers his second of the season off Archer, and the ball game tied at one.
our East Winds page Toronto 40th season as they open up at home their opener will have that new dirt infield much talked about Tigers beat the Yankees today four to nothing Jordan Zimmerman great numbers two hits seven innings gets the win Cabrera two for four Homer two RBIs and last season the Jays bullpen converted 60 point seven of their save opportunities fourth lowest first two games four games of the season and two of them they had a blown save and a loss out of their bullpen it continues to be a problem for for them. Lots of blue sky turning dark here tonight, but there is the new moon making an appearance. And the pitch is taken for a strike. You seen any pictures of that uh, new Toronto infield? I've seen pictures, yeah. but I haven't seen any video of it. Yeah, it looks pretty good yeah. uh, picture wise. I actually heard uh, an interview with Buck uh, Martinez, and he was talking about how good it looks. You know, just to see an actual baseball field in, yeah. in in the dome up there. Now we'll see how it plays. There was a time last season, early, when Buck Showalter threatened not to play a game because the he thought that infield, that new rubber infield, was so bad yeah. uh, that they shouldn't be played on. <laughs> Single for Forsyth his first time up. Pitch to him is going to be up and in. That'll back him off the plate. In fact, the numbers prove true. At Rogers Center's last year, on ground balls, the average was 216. Compared to all other ballparks, 246. Wow. That's how slow that rubberized turf was that they had. It just slowed everything yeah, down. It ate everything up. But uh, it's going to be a little bit quicker. Yeah. I, re I remember uh, when the Trop had the dirt infield and the old turf it was like a lightning <laughs> infield fastest infield I've ever seen and I think uh, there's going to be an adjustment that needs to be made up there in Toronto as well with yeah. how quick that's going to be. Well I remember talking to J.J. Hardy about that how he had to play you had to move in you had to be so conscious of making sure you were in much further right. than you'd normally play. Yeah definitely in and order was, to get to it. Yeah the ball would just keep checking up and all that yeah. uh, turf and rubber mixture three ball two strike delivery on the way. That one down the line in right will be headed to the seats and out of play. Saw Tillman on that pitch before do a 360 uh, and then he looked down. He lost his footing, but fortunately uh, didn't do any harm to the body on that one, but wasn't real happy about that landing point, the pitch no. before that. Another seven pitch at bat, Forsyth Morrison and then Longoria. 3 2 delivery. And that will be a walk. The second surrendered by Tillman. Let's take a look at our Maryland Lottery contestant of the game. It's Frank Montini from Bell Camp. 500 for being selected, 500 more for every Orioles home run hit. You can play home run riches scratch offs, win up to 50,000, or enter non winning tickets for a chance to be the contestant of the game. Go to mdlottery.com slash baseball. And good luck, Frank. Lead off man all three innings has been on. Tough way to pitch it was a problem for Tillman last year. He only retired 61 percent of leadoff batters. You compare that with his opponent tonight, Archer, 79 percent of leadoff batters retired last year. Well, Tillman's been able to get out of some jams here in the early going in this ball game with a couple double play balls. Uh, that good two seam fastball has been working for him. I'd like to get another roller right here. Logan Morris sent it into a double play. Pitch will be taken up. Manny Machado that time was moved over to the shortstop position. He was more towards third in the first at bat by Morris, and he charged in on the pitch that time. Well, you move it around a little bit, and Manny, uh, his experience at third base and working with Bobby Dickerson, and some of these hitters on Tampa, they will. Lay a bunt down and a shift of defense. Morrison's one of those guys that showed it last year. So defensively, you just mix it up a little bit. You kind of show uh, yourself deeper. You move in on the ball, maybe try to take one away. And the hitter can recognize the defensive positioning, so they may have to change their thought process, you know, during a pitch, which uh, can really, yeah. you know, not be beneficial, obviously, for a hitter. Shout out. Same positioning here with a two ball one strike count. Logan Morrison runner at first base nobody out. And a check swing and a called strike and Morrison wants to know did you say I went around or is it a called strike. 
I think he called it a strike. Well, it'd be nice if he did. It would be a good high strike. He's been a little tight at the bottom of the strike zone. Oh, it's either a strike called or swinging because uh, it looked like both were good. Take a look at the pitch here. Just on the corner of the box in the pitch track. Either way, strike two. Yeah, he didn't signal that hitter had gone around, so I think he just called that a strike. 2 2 delivery on the way, and that's a strike two. That's strike three, actually. <laughs> and Tillman gets the second strikeout for him. One down. Well, center cut fastball right here, working up and away to Morrison, and it looked like Morrison was thinking about something else, looking for the off speed pitch. There you go. That's what happens when you have extra things in your mind. Just a pair of shoes. So now there's one away with a runner on at first base. Here is Longoria, the home run. First of the year. Game in the first inning. Longoria will take it away for a ball. Longoria just keeps piling up these numbers. Now with the seven home runs off Tillman, that's the most he's had off any one pitcher. The he had been tied at six with Sabathia in the home runs that he did off pitchers. That one will go the other way and will be foul at 92. Yeah, take a look at the Jeep inside the numbers uh, updated here now. Career versus Chris Tillman. 55 plate appearances, hit 17, but the seven home runs, of course, one back in the first inning, the solo shot. 11 extra base hits, 10 RBI, all first in Major League rankings. Now, you had mentioned Sabathia, who he was tied with with the six home runs, but the next closest right handed pitcher only has, he's has three home runs against so he sees something yeah. on Tillman and uh, interesting to a righty lefty right right hander Tillman left hander yeah. Sabathia yeah so Tillman trying to get him here and got a strike on that big cut one and two against Longoria Longoria now has hit 17 home runs in this ballpark 17 of the 30 that he's had against the Orioles have come here at Oriole Park at Camden Yards trade for him right away <laughs> one ball two strike count one down a tough getting their franchise player He's done <laughs> a lot of good things for Tampa Forsyth not a big lead at first held by Davis one two delivery check swing did he go nope then a demuth down at first Mike Estabrook's our home plate umpire Oh, good change up here and look at the quality of the pitch you get Evan Longoria out in front almost had him biting on that would love to see him put it in play Greg Gibson down at second at Hickox we've seen already at third the umpiring crew 2 2 runner not going and he lifts another one foul and way back into the seats now the Orioles come in early on in first place in the American League Eastern Division. With that 3 0 mark they have, they've got a one game advantage in the standings over the Yankees. Boston has started 1 1, Tampa Bay's 2 2, along with Toronto 2 2. Orioles, of course, will play this weekend series and then go to Boston, and it will be Boston's home opener on Monday afternoon at Fenway. 2 2 delivery on the way, and just in case you were leaning in, 3 <laughs> 2. Sometimes you have to do that. And, uh, I don't know that it's happened a lot when Tillman faces Longoria, but uh, he lets that one fly. 94 up and in. See Longoria, the quiet approach, but uh, <laughs> quick lean back in 94. 3 2 count, runner goes. Ball is popped up in the infield, second base or short. And Manny Machado moves over to put it away, and there are two down. Well, this week only T-Mobile customers can get a free season-long subscription to MLB TV Premium. Go to T-Mobile.com slash MLB, sign up now, and catch every moment on America's fastest-growing LTE network. Ball game tied at one on home runs by Longoria and Chris Davis. Lead-off man on each of the three innings, but doubled up in the first two and now Forsyth is still over there at first base with two down and here's Dickerson Dickerson had a double his first time up and another big cut he gets his 
DH swings up there. Yeah. Did so in the first at bat as well. Yeah, he lets it fly for sure. At uh, the 24 home runs back in 2014. And then he thought he was going to be the next uh, big time power hitter in the game. Only 26 years old, but yeah, some injuries kind of set him back. 0 oh, 1 count. Tillman holds and up high. He only got in 65 games with Colorado last year with the three times that he had to go to the DL and then the uh, deal brought him over here. Kevin Cash has him in the lineup as the DH. He's got a major league 299 career average coming into this season. One ball one strike count. Tillman's pitch to him will go to short. He's got some twist on it. Manny Machado up with it over the first. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on base. Jonathan Scope, Ryan Flaherty in the top of the order coming up for the Orioles. Sunday when the O's take on the race it's a 135 game and the first 7500 fans 14 and under get the eat sleep Orioles t-shirt then the kids can run the bases after the game and some will have selected randomly I might add get the chance to be on the field with the players for some ceremonies that's this Sunday you can go to Orioles.com slash kids and there is the t-shirt youngsters are going to be picking up when they come to the ballpark Sunday. Now because of the weather conditions tomorrow the scheduled birds are back rally that's sponsored and presented by the Orioles radio network affiliate WTTR radio has been canceled there will be no birds are back rally that was scheduled for tomorrow with the rain snow and wind in the forecast. Well ploof it was gone. <laughs> he left he left with the twins. Oh, he's gone sorry. <laughs> and the pitch is taken inside for a ball. Jonathan Scope leading it off in this tie ball game. Flaherty and then the top of the order. Record up. Shift on against Jonathan and the pitch will be up high from Archer. Three for five lifetime against Archer. For Jonathan Scope. Three hits, ten at bats, couple of RBIs. Two O delivery is going to be the other way foul. Jonathan Scope uh, off to a nice start this season. Of course, had the great spring, and so many people in the baseball world thinking this is going to be the year Jonathan Scope really establishes himself as a uh, bona fide all star. Best at turning a double play. That game. one to right field over near the line. Sousa will come over and uh, put it away in his ski outfit. And one away. Uh, the day after the Orioles win and score five or more runs, you get 50% off regular menu price online orders at PapaJohns.com. Promo code Orioles5. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John. Not real happy with the at bat. Scope goes back. 
Because anytime you don't get a hit, you're not happy with it. All <laughs> right. Well, especially if it's a pitch you should square up. Hit a little bit better. Thinks he should have covered that one. So Ryan Flaherty gets in the lineup, uh, playing at third base with Hardy out, Machado to short, and Flaherty sees his first action. 1 0 delivery, and that'll be taken for a strike. So Kim, the only Oriole, now waiting to get in. Buck Showalter saying he's got to get that done this weekend. We'll get Kim into the lineup some way, one way or the other. 1 1 delivery. Good start for Flaherty here because he's going against, uh, while it's Archer, he's 5 for 16 against him. Yeah. So there is Kim uh, waiting for his debut. Kind of funny. Uh, no secret Buck Showalter obviously knows the numbers and if there are opportunities to play bench players he makes sure the numbers are good and puts the guys in the best position to succeed Ryan Flaherty had a great spring training probably as good as we've seen him offensively he has great balance in the box right now and he's hoping to carry it over into this year because if he can add that offensive thump with the bat I mean what kind of value. And you put on a player like Flaherty can play every position in the infield and then if the left handed bat comes around he has great power way around on that one skied it into the upper deck ricocheting down to field level three ball two strike count on Ryan Archer's having to throw a lot of pitches here what we were talking about earlier so closes in on 40. Orioles will take that this bullpen kind of a mess right now for the Rays Archer comes in and gets the strikeout two down here in the third inning third third K is picked up we've seen a couple of these uh, hanging sliders mistake pitches and I think both Flaherty and Weeders thinking they're going to drop down a little bit more but they spin at the top of the zone he's able to pick up a couple strikeouts that way. That will bring record to the plate. He had a base hit first time up. So he has hit successfully in all four games for the Orioles. Archer's delivery to him. And that is in there for a strike. Fred Boxberger, the closer for Tampa Bay, is on the DL. So they are mixing and matching in the bullpen. So that is. Really resulted in the team having to kind of play matchup right from the very first time they go to the pen. All right. Well, just when a team thinks they have enough arms to start trading them away, then they get caught off guard with the injury bug, and Boxberger going down has uh, certainly hurt them last year. 41 saves. 1 1 delivery up the middle. Of course, it's another base hit. Whatever the magic is, Joey, send a little up here as he is now two for two in this ball game with two singles. A sound approach. You know, he works the count typically. He's been using the whole field. His fastball is supposed to be inside. It stays out over the plate. He just hammers it right back through the box. Good piece of hitting. Seven hits, 13 at bats. That's how you do mm -mm -mm. it. Joey, Joey. <laughs> Might get another curtain call. That was a good one. Two down. And here's Reimold. Grounded into a double play his first time up. Runner goes. Conger. Well, he came back. Sorry. He had a real good jump, but decided not to go. We've told you a lot of bases stolen off Conger. 0 1 count. Rickard in the first inning. For some reason, did not go and ended up being part of that double play. And he does not go here, and the pitch will be taken away for a ball. Well, when he bluffed the steal and then went back to first base, uh, he kind of tipped his head back like he was frustrated. I think he was expecting a fastball first pitch, and it was breaking ball. So he might have given himself uh, or had an opportunity to go on that first pitch. 1 1 delivery on the way. Reimold will take that's going to be in there for a strike. And the count goes to one and two. Well. Show Walter you saw sending the signs out. Bobby Dickerson at third. 
Well, also uh, relaying a message to uh, Estabrook behind the plate. Yes. <laughs> saying about both ways. Tillman's thrown a couple quality pitches at the bottom of the zone. Conger able to scoop that one up. And the count will go to two and the two. Division games for the Orioles were obviously they're vitally important and the Orioles were two above 500 last year 39 and 37 against the American League East. 2 2 count. And he went around. So strikeout number four picked up by Archer no runs on one hit no errors and one left on base home runs one each. Orioles baseball brought to you by the RAV4 Hybrid. All wheel drive and unexpected performance. Visit myatoyota.com. Game tied at 1 1. Longoria home run in the first inning. Chris Davis answered in the second, leading it off with his second home run. Chris Tillman, a couple of walks, two strikeouts. Archer, no walks and four strikeouts. 1 4 and 0. Oh. That's the line for both ball clubs. Three left on by the Rays and one by the O's. Desmond Jennings will lead it off. He drew a walk first time up. Tillman trying to get the leadoff man out here for the first time in four innings of this ball game. 0 oh, 1 count. Right handers delivery to him, and that'll be fouled back off the end. No, Tillman gets ahead of him. Two strikes. Oh, good job. And we've seen, uh, you know, the starting pitchers, actually, all the pitchers, bullpen as well, uh, mixing their pitches up. Great confidence in all their offerings. Tillman's doing that right now. Started Jennings up with a change and a good fastball to get ahead. That's really going to be a key. Not Nobody has really overpowering one dominant pitch that they can stick with. So they're going to have to mix pitches up, trust their secondary stuff, and just try to keep hitters off balance and off the fastball. And that one is going to be down low. Tillman threw just 22 pitches on opening day. 17 of those were for strikes. So already well above that air as he crosses the 50 pitch mark. Two balls, two strikes. And throttle back a little bit on it and got him. Well, this is a money change up. I'm telling you, plus plus change from Tillman. Great arm speed, sells it good. You know, the location not perfect, but man, oh man, coming out of the hand, that is a four seam fastball. Look at how far Jennings is out in front. Kind of shows you how. Uh, Good Tillman's fastball is as well. Hitters have to really gear up for it. They can't wait and track the ball as long. So Tillman popping it up there 94-95 certainly helps that change. Goes after the first pitch, Miller. 
Down the line and left. Manny Machado, the long run, gets there. Miller retired as Manny at shortstop. Becomes the long receiver on that one and gets the out. <laughs> a great play from Manny Machado. He gets it going right here. This is a really nice play from Manny. Obviously uh, over at shortstop, but the awareness, the court awareness, knowing where the outfielders are, right off the bat, he knew that was probably going to be his ball. Nice line, good pursuit angle, good play in the second out. Bobby Dickerson, J.J. Hardy talking about that. Obviously uh, going over <laughs> some positioning. Two down, two quick outs for Tillman. Souza at the plate, Steven Souza. And he'll take the first pitch for a ball. Souza picked up a base hit in his first at bat. 16 home runs last year, tied for third among rookies in that category. Swing and a miss on a real good movement that was down and away. Souza made starts uh, in right field primarily, 101 of them. DH'd only once. Last season. 1 1 delivery to him, and that's going to be in the outside corner as well. So Tillman picking up the pace and the effectiveness, and the Orioles will come out of the shift and move Jonathan Scope to the second base side of the bag. You see the pitch track there, great location working down and away on Sosa, and I think that's what's been impressive about Tillman. Down the line, long run Trumbo was over near the gap, and it's going to be a foul ball. Tillman's ability to locate the fastball at times uh, last season it just disappeared the command of the heater just all over the place in the early going of this season and finishing up spring training he was really locating well and you're driving it hard down and away to Sosa. Two down nobody on here in the fourth inning. One ball two strike count. Upfield staying back. Wind has died down here to just a very gentle breeze. And a swing and a miss. Real good inning. Tillman gets his fourth strikeout, two of them here in the inning as he retires the side in order. Bottom of the fourth, middle of the order. Machado, Davis, and Trumbo coming up. Orioles baseball on mass and brought to you by Southwest transparency low fares nothing to hide and by PNC Bank for the achiever in you first of three we're talking about how the Orioles in the division last year two above 500 only the Orioles and Toronto had winning records against division opponents in the East last year Toronto went 42 and 34 they had the best mark in division games the Orioles 39 and 37 and obviously when you're playing all those teams 19 times that's a half of your schedule. Oh yeah you got to play well against uh, your division the Orioles have done a nice job of that over the past four seasons look to repeat that actually uh, 
pick it up though against the rest of Major League Baseball. Manny Machado strikeout victim his first time up. Chris Archer. First pitch popped up first base. Waiting on it. Morrison makes the catch. We we're talking about those numbers regarding the East. Yeah, last season uh, against the East, 513 winning percentage. Uh, very good numbers, even though the high earned run average. And take a look at the rest of Major League Baseball. Uh, the lower earned run average with the winning percentage down a little bit. The Orioles can slug though 253 against the East and averaging uh, good numbers for the home runs. So, you know, they just need to pick it up a little bit against uh, the rest of the of the league. They've been playing very well against their own division. I'll probably continue to do that. Chris Davis, after hitting a home run, tries to lay down a bunt. He had that whole left side available to him with Longoria moved way over. And Chris trying to get on here in a 1 1 ball game. He delivered the homer leading off the second inning, getting his second of the year. He has really used the long ball against his Tampa Bay team. And now you come back and you do this the first game you face him. <laughs> yeah, uh, targeting Chris Davis down and away could be a mistake because uh, his power zone, his bat path is right there, and he got on the good fastball, He's showing the good patience, using the big part of the field. He locks in like that, he's going to start doing some damage. Chris now has 23 career home runs against uh, Tampa Bay. Part of a 245 average he has against them. 0 1 count. Shift remains on, third base remains open. Does not show about that time and takes it down low. 86 and a one ball, one strike count. And we said at the top, these two teams are used to playing these very close ball games. Not only against one another, but against other ball clubs as well. And this game, at least for the moment, starting out that way. Kevin Cash back for his second season. Manager at Tampa Bay, and of course Buck Showalter. Looking to get back into the playoffs with the Orioles. That one is bounced to the screen. Three ball, one strike count. Boy, Chris Davis, nice patient at bat going right now. Archer flipping in a couple breaking balls. A change right there. And Chris not even flinching, really letting the ball travel, seeing it well, trusting his hands, and not letting the body get out ahead. Of course, a lot of offseason work with Scott Coolbaugh. And he's on. That'll be the first walk surrendered by Archer. Still time to take advantage of Birdland's best value in family entertainment. Sign the family up for the Junior Orioles Dugout Club. Kids 14 and under, a couple of packages to choose from, six game packages, exclusive benefits, game tickets included, and uh, family and friends can get game tickets for dugout club games for as little as $6. Go to Orioles.com slash dugout club. And one like that or that. A little selfie. Here's Mike Trumbo. Trumbo will take it for a strike. Trumbo picked up a base hit. His first time up. A little number down the line. The Orioles have used the long ball and the swinging bunts. Part of their four hits that they've picked up in the game. Short lead at first for Davis. Archer gets it in there at the knees for a strike. Late call. Trumbo turns to ask. Wow. Trumbo not very happy with that. Buck Showalter. Uh, and that's the Brooks ear again. You see the fastball. I mean, it's a pitcher's pitch. You want to throw it down and away, but man, Conger didn't receive it very well. Almost took it right back down to the dirt. So, uh, you know, probably shouldn't be rewarded there. The smiling face of the skipper. <laughs> Foul back. And it remains a two strike count. <laughs> Commenting even while giving the signs right. there, huh? Yeah. Multitasking. Multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and two. Archer will have to wait. Trumbo stepped out that time. Archer getting ready in a hurry. And Trumbo wanted a little more time. 
Archer here at Camden Yards has won one and lost two in his career. Now the Orioles have played Archer very tough. That one in the air to right center field. Kiermaier, runner halfway, will go back. Tampa Bay outfield had played that one perfectly. They were squeezing that gap. And there are two down. That'll bring up Mac Wheaters. If you look back to what went on last season, there's some streaks underway. Yeah, Matt Wheaters, one of them with the active hitting streaks. Cano's got a 19 gamer going. Zimmerman 14 with the Nationals. Gonzalez Eaton. And there's Matt Wheaters, 10 game hitting streak. Rolling on into this season, of course, started the 2016 season with the walk off base hit to extend the streak. Robinson Cano is off to a great start. Four home runs picked up so far this season for the Seattle second baseman. Weeders takes the pitch inside. That was a strikeout victim his first time up. 1 0 count, two down. Chris Davis still on at first base. Morrison holding. Weeders down to first. Foul ball just missed. Wow. Well stayed on that line all the way down to the wall. Nobody was going to field it, but it didn't stay fair. Yep. They always wonder uh, you watch hitters, lefties. How the ball actually travels if they pull it foul. If it has a big hook to it, that means they're kind of getting around it. They stay through it and the ball stays true. And really, that's what Matt Weeder's ground ball did right there. It, yeah, it was foul, but it stayed right on the line. There wasn't any hook to it at all. One ball, one strike delivery by Archer and a big swing on a pitch down low that he can't come up with. And Matt, count goes to one and two. A sharper slider right there. One that uh, Buck Showalter was talking about with that sharp uh, downer type break. Nasty two slider differentiation that Archer's got. One ball, two strike count. Uses that high set, long look. And Weeders will foul that one off the other way. So Archer really having to work here in this ball game, 62 pitches, having been thrown so far with this Tampa Bay team. Hickey, the pitching coach on the right, you want to get to the bullpen. I mean, they have an outstanding rotation. That's the strength of this ball club. You're trying to get these starters out of there, and Buck was talking about it before the game. You got to grind. And that means a lot of foul balls. You hang in, you try and take the count deep like this. Yeah. And, and get them out of there because you've got a better chance. That's what the numbers say if you can get to the bullpen. Sure. And uh, this rotation is healthy this year. Smiley spent time on the DL last season. He's back, ready to go. More as well. Recovered from Tommy John, came back in the middle of summer. So he's uh, anxious and ready to go. But it's the bullpen that there could be question marks. We mentioned Boxberger down. They don't have Jake McGee anymore. And they're actually carrying eight arms in the bullpen. So mm. they do have to get out there. Look for a lot of matchups. One, two, delivery in the dirt. We've seen Conger come up with some really nice scoops in this game with runners on base. He may not be able to throw them out, but he sure does let them <laughs> let the ball get by and let them move up on those. And a two ball, two strike count. Yeah, a little bit surprised that the Orioles haven't run just to uh, test Conger. Two two delivery, runner not going, ground ball again fouled off outside of first base. So he's Weeders really battling here, and this is the kind of grind him out at bat. Mike Showalter is looking for holding that count at two and two. Yeah, and this kind of stuff wears on a pitcher as well. When he's thinking, what what can I possibly throw him? I've shown him everything I've got. I've worked him inside. I've tried to get him away outside with fastballs and soft stuff. Now, what do I do now? Well, Matt Weeders, of course, is up there thinking anything, anything. Stay short and just take the bat head to the ball. 2 2 delivery in the dirt. That one bounced. And that will send Davis down to second on a wild pitch. So the Orioles get the potential go ahead run into scoring position. 
with a full count coming up to Wheaters. Well, Congress made some nice stops, but uh, Archer spiking this one right in front of home plate. Very tough to get the body in front of. It was too high of a hop. Picks off the left side of the body, and Davis able to walk into second base, get himself in scoring position. So 3 2 2 down. Miller, the shortstop, playing behind second base with a shift on. And Wheaters will foul yet another one away. Archer last year averaged just over 16 pitches per inning. The average last year was 15.9, so he was right there, the average. And that's what he's doing so far here in this game. Just over 16 pitches per inning so far. Bartolo Colon had the best number last year, 13.9. Three ball, two strike count. Leaders. There's a base hit. What an at bat. Making the turn. Chris Davis will come to the plate and score. And did Weeders earn that one? An RBI and a two to one lead on a tremendous effort by the Oriole catcher. Boy, that was something else. Fouling everything off until he could finally get a pitch to handle and come through in a big way to take the lead. Look at the pitch track. Just filled up the tenth pitch. Finally, well, I think Archer gave up. He said, here you go, right down the middle. And Weeders whacks it base hit. Davis able to score from second base because of the wild pitch. But remember, he got on there with a base on balls. Another quality of that from Davis as well. Where the Orioles, they've had only one walk and it scores. They have used those walks. They did in the first series against Minnesota. And to start the same thing out here. But that is a great 10 pitch at bat by Weeders and an RBI. So the Orioles get the lead here as Alvarez hit into a double play his first time up. Will take the pitch for a strike. Weeders now has three RBIs on the young season. Three RBIs and 10 at bats. All three of the hits he's picked up have come from the left side of the plate. 0 1 delivery. Pedro Alvarez swings through that one. And it count goes to 0 2. Shift is put on against Alvarez. As the Oriole DH now with an 0 for 9 going in the ball game in the uh, season. And Pedro might be getting a little bit antsy right now, you know, looking for that first hit. When he's right, he drives the ball to left center field. Archer keeps it away from him. And a one ball, two strike count. Five hits for the Orioles now, four for the Rays. Watch the setup where they want to go here. Conga keeps it down low. It'll be foul back and out of play. And a one ball, two strike count. Good swing there from Alvarez. I'm going to take one to get this big man rolling. Uh, led the National League in home runs just a couple years ago with 36. Big time power hitter. Sometimes just that one base hit gets a hitter rolling. One two delivery on the way. Whoa. Went upstairs and hacked that one foul. That was an incoming over the dugout of the Rays. Count stays at one and two. He has faced Archer only three times, 0 for 3 against the 27 year old right hander. One two count short lead first Weeders outfield very deep. Alvarez a little roller. It will be fair and will be played to the bag by Morrison. So that will do it but the Orioles take advantage of opportunities a walk a wild pitch and a Weeders base hit. And the Orioles have a two to one lead.
Home run by Davis for the Orioles here at Camden Yards. Longoria on the other side and down the Orioles on the single by Weeders have a two to one lead. Tillman back to work and a strike taken by Kevin Kiermeyer, their center fielder. Kiermeyer hit into a double play his first time up. 0 1 delivery to him, and that'll be popped up outside of third. Flaherty will have no play. Told you it was the Platinum Glove winner last season in the American League Best Defensive Player, period, is what that means. And he had an amazing 42 defensive runs saved. Wow. That is an extremely high number. 0 2 pitch on the way, and he will take that one up high. Kiermeyer last season at 42. And Ender and Ciarte of Arizona was second with 29. That's how far ahead he was. Wow. In that department. 1 2 delivery on the way. Sometime in my lifetime, I will come to understand exactly what the formula is for that, but <laughs> it's an impressive number anyway. <laughs> Well, I could probably show you the formula in one of the fan graphs things, but it's a matter of figuring it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> two ball, two strike delivery, and a roller to second. Scope charges, got a hustle, does, and gets it. One away, fifth inning. Catch the complete game. Never miss a home run, a game changing play for O's alerts and opportunities to win exclusive prizes, including meet and greets with players. Text Orioles to 29292. That's Orioles to, that's T O, 29292. Two pitchers first, going at it. Yeah, first pitch strikes. Uh, Archer leading the way, but I'll tell you what, Chris Tillman is settling in right now. The changeup has come up big for him. Great pitches uh, in the last inning. Both his strikeouts were on changeups, and they're able to get Kiermeyer to roll over a changeup there to scope. Conger grounded out his first time up. He'll take it away. Both these teams in the opening series held opponents to some really low averages. The Orioles, the Minnesota Twins, hit only 216 against the Orioles in those three games. And Toronto hit only 213 against the Tampa Bay Rays, splitting the four game set. That, those are both very low numbers. Yeah, very low. And uh, of course, this pitching staff, always highly touted for the Rays, they ended up like 46 strikeouts against the uh, Blue Jays. So, big time strikeout club. Shift on with the 2 1 delivery on the way to Conger. Little roller, that's Ryan Flaherty. Third baseman, as far away from his position as he can get. And records the out. And there are two down. Take a look at our PNC minor league report PNC for the achiever in you. Now Trey Mancini uh, headlining the Bowie Bay Sox of course last year's Eastern League champions and uh, he starts off the season going two for six couple home runs four RBI last season 341 21 homers 89 RBI. Yeah he was the Orioles minor league player of the year. And we will be going with that six man rotation. Gunkel Hess, Bridwell, Miranda, Lee, and Garcia. Tillman looking to have a one, two, three inning. He has retired the last eight batters faced. Logan Forsythe at the top of the order has drawn a walk and he has singled. They shift in the infield. And he will take the strike. 0 oh 2 high strikes being called to the dismay of hitters to the delight of pitchers. Yeah. Well, Tillman's made some really good uh, pitches in the bottom part of the zone especially early in the game they didn't get called it's good to see. least at the top of the zone getting called because he can work up there as well. 0 oh 2 will be slapped. Right out in front of home plate and foul. So the count will stay at two strikes. 0 oh 2. Chris Tillman working in on that 90th pitch. But as Mike said, looking even better as the game has gone along. Forsyth with two down and nobody on the 0-2 delivery to him. He waited on it. It'll be outside. Nice try there with the slider. Beautiful pitch. Great location. Really doing what he wants right now with the baseball as far as locating it. See the pitch track, pitches at the top of the zone, and then locating down at that 
bottom corner. Forsyth will take that one away. Forsyth won the uh, Tampa Bay Team Award as the MVP, voted by the Tampa Bay chapter of the Baseball Writers Association. And uh, always so happy to see that they have named that award after the great Don Zimmer. It's the Don Zimmer MVP Award in Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. 2 2 delivery on the way and a swing and a miss as he went upstairs. Tillman gets his fifth strikeout, retires the side in order, nine in a row set down with the Orioles on top by one. From Camden Yards, the Rays in town. Chris Davis working another quality walk. One out on the board, and then Weeders goes to work. Pitch number three, nasty slider, high fastball. How about a backdoor slider? He fights off. Back foot slider, not going to work. Bounces one in the dirt on the eighth pitch. Davis on the second base. Ninth pitch, tenth pitch. Finally, leaves one in the middle of the plate. And Matt Weeders comes through. Great at bat. Big time job by Chris Davis able to score Dickerson sent him in and the Orioles take the lead two to one here in the bottom of the fifth Remember, Geico 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on car insurance visit Geico.com for a free rate quote. Jonathan Scope will lead it off. First ball hitting center field hit it hard Kiermaier back at the wall. Goodbye home run. Catch that one bullpen. the long ball for a three to one lead and Darren O'Day is number one in the bullpen catching home runs. <laughs> yeah, he is. Well, I think they back away from Darren O'Day out there. Great swing from Jonathan Scope. Jonathan Scope with the long ball. Frank Montini, our Maryland Lottery contestant, $500 for each home run hit, along with the 500 you get for being selected. Home runs by Davis and Jonathan Scope. That one foul back. So Archer's been throwing a lot of sliders. Here comes another one, and this one just hanging up there. Jonathan getting the arms extended out in front a little bit, but keeps the bat head through. And Darren O'Day on the end making the highlight catch in the bullpen. Solo shot for Scope. First home run for Jonathan on the year. And the Orioles take the three to one lead. Hit number six for the O's. And TJ McFarland getting ready in the bullpen. 0 oh, 2 count. And a swing and a miss by Ryan Flaherty. Strikeout victim number five for Archer. The Orioles getting the long ball against him in the lead. So we saw the hanging slider, and this is uh, the finishing slider right here, just burying it. And at the bottom, 83, Jonathan Scope, 100 miles an hour off the bat. The good buddies, Machado and Scope. <laughs> yeah, they're having some fun, aren't they? Record at the plate, Joey Rickard goes after the first pitch. Miller up. 
in the dirt. Nice pick made by Morrison. Two for three in the ball game for the Oriole leadoff batter. Mile One Automotive offering you 20 convenient locations throughout the Baltimore area. Visit them in store or online at mileone.com. Well, here at Camden Yards, they're finishing up this series against the Rays tomorrow night at 7, then Sunday afternoon start at 1.30. And the O's go on the road. Boston for three and Texas for four. Nolan Reimold has struck out and hit into a double play. Orioles going to be staying in Fort Worth. We were talking about that the other day. I don't remember the club ever staying there before. It's always been in Arlington or right, Dallas. Right. Or you know any good restaurants in Fort I Worth? I certainly do. Yeah. 1 0 pitch on the way. <laughs> the Lonesome Dove, one of America's great restaurants, is located right in the center of Fort Worth, old Fort Worth, Texas. This is the old area now. This is the cattle country area. Ah. It's a great place. I'm only familiar with the new area. And it's not far away. It's only about a mile and a half, two miles away. It's a nightlife area, so I know you'll be there. Well, no, 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 no. I didn't say that. I did not say that. A two-ball, one-strike count. Is there a mechanical bull or anything? <laughs> There's a lot of mechanical bull. That one hit deep. That's in the power alley towards center. It is gone. Another one. Goodbye, home run. No puts it in three in the ball game for the Orioles and a 4 1 lead. Orioles showing the power on the cool night. So it takes a little while for the ball to start jumping out of Camden Yards but uh, these guys strong like bulls a lot of sunflower seed showers coming down right now. Well, Frank Montini is loving this out of Bell Camp, our Maryland lottery contestant. That's a thousand bucks in one inning and three home runs, fifteen hundred. Two thousand total. Pitch is taken outside. Take a look at Nolan Ryan hold swing here. Fastball up and out over. Rhymehold, he started heating up at the end of spring training. Three home runs and nice to see it carry. There's up. another one way back by Manny Machado. Goodbye, home run. Back home runs in the fifth inning and three total in one inning off Archer. And the Orioles extend it to 5 1. Okay, so the bottom of the order gets you with Jonathan Scope, the solo shot. Lineup turns back over for Reimold, the two hitter gets you Machado, and now you got to go through Davis and Trumbo and the rest of them. There is no let up in this Orioles lineup. Chris Archer had one game last year where he gave up three home runs. It was against Boston. He has given up four home runs in this ball game, three in one inning. The only one not in this inning was Davis, who's at the plate. Let's see Manny Machado. <laughs> doing just what Scott Jonathan Scope did, jumping on the slider that stays in the middle of the plate. And this ball is powered. And there you go, the handshake. Scope and Machado getting it done. So the Orioles blasting away here in this fifth inning. I still do not see any action in the Tampa Bay bullpen. A little movement down there, but nobody throwing. One ball, one strike delivery on the way, and that will be taken down low. 19 home runs surrendered by Archer total last year. Four already given up in this ball game, and this has been uh, a great inning for the Orioles here in the fifth. 2-1 delivery. Davis will take it. Chris got his second home run in the second inning. Then he drew a walk in the fourth and came home in the RBI base hit by Weeders. And the Orioles with their first back to back home runs of the 2016 season. 3 1, and that's way off the mark. And Jim Hickey, the pitching coach, is going to have to come out here to at least try and settle him down a little bit and maybe give the bullpen a chance to get warmed up. Yeah, now Archer's, uh, you know, he's done some really good things at the major league level. But he can still get a little bit emotional out there. This inning could 
as it already has kind of get away from him moving up the three solo shots and Hickey's saying hey you just got to step back take a deep breath execute your pitch here you know it's pretty tough though when one after the other it's danger 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 you're careful against Chris Davis and then you get the giant Mark Trumbo stepping in there who's hit balls 500 feet in spring training Romero has just started to throw in the bullpen he's only thrown two pitches out there so Archer's going to have to go deeper his 100th pitch is coming up runner on at first Davis two walks in the ball game for him the only two surrendered by Archer here's Trumbo and he will take the pitch down low for a ball Trumbo a base hit and he has flied out to center field. Orioles with the four home runs in this game uh, already have seven on the year now as a team. 1 0 pitch. That's going to be a base hit towards the gap in right center field. Davis is heading to third base. Cut off. Souza will get it back in. Trumbo gets a hard single. He's two for three in the ballgame. Nice piece of hitting right there. Coming at the right field. I love the patience. Yeah, home runs are starting to come, but. You know, take what's given. This fastball on the outside corner. Big hole over there with Davis at first base. And Trumbo was shooting that hole. Nice piece of hitting. So the Orioles a chance to add to it. Eighth batter to come to the plate will be Matt Wieters. He's got an RBI base hit. The Orioles, despite the fact they've got five runs, only it's one for one with the runner in scoring position, only their second chance in this situation. And Wieters will file it back into the screen. Struck out in the second. The RBI base hit came after a tremendous 10 pitch at bat in the fourth inning. And he got a single and drove him home. Davis over there at third. Mike Trumbo on at first. Archer trying to get through the inning, two down. Leaders will take it down low. Conger is able to stop it. Orioles hitters really making them work now. I mean, uh, taking advantage of some mistakes and getting me over sliders, just getting hammered out of the ballpark. And now Archer in a little bit of a panic mode, it seems, in the middle of this ball game. 1 1 delivery on the way. Wieners hit him. Ball bounces away. Nobody's going to get the first base and a run will score. Another RBI. Wieners, a base hit. Davis scores, and that one got a piece of Archer, and that will bring Kevin Cash out along with the trainer. Wow, Wieners staying on this slider. Look at him take the head Ooh. to it. And Archer. Geez, even after taking one off the body, ready to make a play at first base. See that hand, huh? I mean, that was a hard hit ball. Back to the mound. Cash may. No, he's not going to. Going to let him uh, toss a couple here. Home plate umpire Mike Esterbrook. Orioles extend their lead now to 6 1. Two RBI ball game for Matt Wieters. Trumbo stopped at second. What an inning for Archer. Said he's all right and will stay in. So Jim Hickey, Kevin Cash, pitching coach Hickey on the right. Not wanting to make a change here in the inning yeah. and go to the bullpen yeah, with two little, down. A little surprised, you know. Yeah. This is a trying inning indeed for Archer, but kind of goes against what Tampa had been. Working with last year, where it seemed like they wouldn't hesitate to get a starting pitcher out of there and go right to the bullpen. And for the last few seasons, the Rays bullpens led in uh, innings used. So maybe some concern about yep. bullpen getting overused here in the early going. So 1 0 count with two down. Trumbo's at second base. Wieters is on at first. Again, Davis has drawn the only two walks. Archer has surrendered and has scored both times. 1 0 pitch put high up in the air to left center field. Kiermeyer will put it away. But the Orioles bat around here in the fifth inning. 
And what a time they have. Jonathan Scope gets his first of the season. Rymo gets his first. Machado follows back to back home runs his second of the year and the Orioles have a 6 1 lead. Orioles baseball on Masson brought to you by Ocean City, Maryland. Let us show you a good time in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at OCOcean.com. And by University of Maryland University College. Gary Thorne and Mike Mordick as the Orioles bat around in the fifth inning and uh, get a 6 1 lead. Tillman out. O's go to the pen. Yeah, Chris Tillman, uh, five strong innings, scattering the four hits, five punch outs in this ball game. Really like the way he worked. Only 83 pitches thrown on three days rest. Kind of expected the early exit. Nice job by Tillman. And now it's time for a pitching change. Brought to you by Jiffy Lube, who'd like to pitch you a change. Regular oil changes are proven to keep your car on the road longer. Drive in today. Well, TJ McFarlane making his season debut. Take a look at his uh, pitch arsenal last year. The fastball, 71%. Good two seamer. It's a lot of ground balls, breaking ball, good slider curve. And the change combination. First pitch will be taken for a strike as Logan Morrison is up. You see TJ's numbers on the year the 26 punch outs in 40 innings. So contact pitcher, but look at the ground ball percentage 66% of his outs on the ground. It'll be Morrison, Longoria, and Dickerson. Morrison is hit into a double play, then called out on strikes for Chris Archer. A very long inning and long game. It's the first time he has allowed three home runs in an inning in his career. One one's going to go to left center field. That's going to be a base hit. It'll be chased down. Record up and we'll hold him to a single. Nice throw as he gets it back in in a hurry. So Morrison made a big turn and he's got to stay at first base. Nice play out there by uh, Joey Rickard. His tight line, good pursuit angle to get to the baseball and keep Morrison there at first. Lots of help from the bench with Adam Jones out positioning players. Record getting the start in center field. Lane Kirby takes care of the outfielders, moving them around. That'll bring up Longoria, a home run first inning. Put uh, the Rays out in front early, and he popped out in the third. Farland's delivery to him inside out foul ball for TJ McFarland against the Rays his 11th career appearance he does not have a record against them 22 hits surrendered in 19 innings against Tampa Bay Longoria with the 0 1 count runner off first getting to chase. Great change up right there from TJ McFarlane. A little setback in spring training. Some soreness kind of held him back from throwing a couple times, but when he came back, he came back strong. Look at that change up. Nice fade action down in the zone, fading away from Longoria. His velocity was up at the end of spring training, and maybe the fact that he hasn't pitched in a while. Still pretty good velocity, 91 92, but he was getting up there 94 miles an hour at the end of spring training. 
Longoria last year a 278 hitter off left handers he had six of his 21 home runs off lefties last year. McFarland with a runner on at first base. Tampa Bay does not have a left handed bat on the bench all of their bench players for this ball game are all right handed hitters. O2 delivery on the way and that one is up high got away. And a one ball two strike count just trying to get Longoria to chase. What an explosion by the Orioles six runs ten hits now a run on five hits for the Rays. This was true in the series against Minnesota the Orioles when they're getting on are getting in foul back. Guess that's easy to say when you got four home runs in the first five innings of a ball game. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was pretty impressive. Uh, of course, Archer, some of the best stuff. We talked about him uh, one of the early favorites to be in, uh, you know, Cy Young. Yep. Um, Chase, the Orioles, just biding their time, waiting him out, and boy, did they turn it on last inning, three solo shots. Check swing, did he go? Nope. Well, I think that one's going to be close. Another good change up right there from T.J. McFarland. Take a look at uh, first base umpire. Youth is looking at two balls, two strikes. Morrison off at first base, down by five runs. Cannot take chances on the base pass here. McFarland's delivery, Longoria will fight that one off, and the count of two balls and two strikes on Evan Longoria. Who's hoping for a healthy season and get in a full year of games and at bats for their leader and veteran player. And they think uh, those numbers will come back this year. A little bit more protection in the lineup, adding uh, Morrison and Dickerson. Dickerson, the DH, hitting behind him in this ball game. Two ball, two strike delivery by McFarland, and another one foul back that he tried to jump on and drive. So McFarland in a nine pitch at bat with the next pitch thrown. Trying to get Longoria out of there, Tampa Bay. Needing some base runners here in the sixth inning. Better be careful uh, in the middle of the plate. I like the action he has on the two seamer and the change down and away. That'll bounce. Count goes full, three and two. Morrison over there at first base. Joe Walters team the much talked about home run hitters on this ball club all through spring training everyone wondering how many what would the total be when the season concludes for the Orioles and homers well they certainly have kicked it off like it's going to be a very high number mm -hmm. three two delivery on the way down to third base played by Ryan Flaherty Jonathan scope turns it can't get him so they'll get the force on Morrison Longoria on the fielder's choice. One down. Create new Birdland memories by hosting your next group outing this summer here at Oriole Park. Discounted tickets for groups as small as 15, facilities for up to 1,000. Great place to have your group outing or meeting. And group leaders can earn a variety of incentives, including the opportunity to throw out the ceremonial first pitch. Go to Orioles.com slash groups. The crowd on hand to open this one up on this Friday night. A uh, bundle up night. Dickerson with a double. He is grounded out. Corey Dickerson will face McFarland. The Orioles infield again will set a double play depth. Dickerson last year, bigger numbers 315 off the righties, 268 off the lefties. Swing and a miss. Doesn't get cheated, does he? Nope. Big cuts. Every swing he's taken in the ball game seemingly has been a home run yeah, cut. Right. Yeah, first pitch breaking ball bouncing in the dirt. He's uh, posing up there. It's going to be a 450 foot shot. I don't feel recognizing that is deep. Oh, one delivery by McFarland. And a one ball, one strike count. After an explosion of home runs last year. Compared to the year before this season now we're only in the first week but already 
is on a pace for even more homers than last year. So early doesn't mean a whole lot, but at least that's the way it started. That is a strike in the inside corner, turning back Dickerson. Count goes to one and two. No, he's either uh, trying to set TJ up or he does not like the ball inside because he even made a flinch on one of uh, Chris Tillman's fastballs that on the inner third actually more towards the middle of the plate and he kind of jumped back a little bit. Longoria off first base one two delivery that's going to miss outside. Leaving the count up two balls and two strikes. Right back with you tomorrow night game two of this set. 6.30 O's extra, 7 o'clock, ball game. Mike Wright, Drew Smiley. Schedule starters. McFarland, the 2 2 pitch, and fouled it off down to one knee on that big cut. Always wondered how players who take swings like this on a regular basis, and there are lots of them. Well, their body just doesn't fall apart. <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, this is an aggressive, violent swing. A bat that's you know 32 to 34 ounces, and it's whipping around there. And the torque is enormous. Oh yeah. I wonder why those. Uh, I mean, you know, you had the oblique problems. Yeah. Right. That's right. <laughs> and off-speed delivery off the end of the bat. Flaherty charges. Got to go to first. Does and gets the out. Two down. Longoria goes to second. This copyrighted telecast presented by Authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. <laughs> and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the uh, Orioles. Even in Massachusetts where there used to be trials. <laughs> 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 now if she'd taken off and started to fly. I would, have, I would have gone down there to try and be an agent. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but I had a story there. <laughs> Orioles up by a score of six to one, two away. Jennings has struck out and walked. In a little bit and fouled right straight back. Crowd got into that. Fifth inning when the Orioles batted around four runs, five hits on the home runs. Now, kind of settle back and waiting to see if the pitching can hold it right here as the Orioles try and start the season with a 4 0 mark. If they can get the victory here, something they've not done since 2011. That pitch is outside and a one ball, one strike count. Well, T.J. McFarland, uh, one of only two lefties the Orioles holding this year. Of course, Zach Britton, the other lefty, and T.J. very versatile. He can be matched up against lefties. He can be the long man. He can spot start. Fouled back. Holds the count of the ball and two strikes. And Buck Showalter uh, still thinking that one day, soon, he will be in the starting rotation. He loves his makeup, his work ethic, he has quality to his pitches, and I think the fact that his velocity kind of getting up there a little better and more consistent, that uh, he could become potentially a, a starting pitcher. Such a valuable long man for the Orioles. One two delivery on the way, gets a chopper to short. Manny Machado. Strong arm gets him. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Take a look at our Honda do ups. Jonathan Scopes got a homer. Ryan Flaherty wants one. Already two for record.
Well, five dollars for the regular edition. Chris Davis explaining his decision to re-sign with the Orioles. Darren O'Day, a discussion with him. The new Orioles, Mark Trumbo, Ivana Gallardo also discussed Q&A sessions. And there's a limited edition, 1,000 of them. They cost only $10 each. And this is the photograph from which this painting was made. Bo Christensen did the artwork on it. That is the special cover for the 1000 limited edition Orioles magazine with Chris Davis. Don't you wish you could paint that fast. It's available at the ballpark. And at Orioles.com. Pretty cool. There's Chris. Archer right, out Romero on left hander. Yeah, big time arm right here. You're going to see some fastballs up in the uh, mid to high 90s. Jonathan Skelp, who started the last inning with a home run, will start this inning here in the sixth. You see the pitch arsenal fastball 94 percent of the time, 94 to 99 with that heater. In two games, nothing on the board yet. A couple K's. Trying to catch up with a heater that was upstairs at 94, and a one ball, one strike count. The Flaherty record at the top for the Orioles with the lead here in the bottom of the sixth. And the pitch is taken down low. One of the tougher nights for Chris Archer. Six runs, ten hits, and five innings. He walked two, struck out four, both walks to Davis, both times scored. And of course, gave up four home runs. Three of them in one inning, first time he'd ever done that. And the Orioles jumping out to the six to one lead as a result. Three ball, one strike count. Scope trying to lead it off with a free pass if he can get one. Came in and challenged him with it. Three and two. Got what he wanted. Fastball right there, but at the top of the zone, tough to get to with the good velocity. Three two delivery on the way to him and up a little bit. Went after it, popped it up back and into the seats. He joined us uh, late in the ball game. J.J. Hardy not playing tonight. Little cap tightness keeping him out. Not sure how long that will be. Adam Jones, second game, consecutive game. He has not started in center. And the muscles around the rib cage bothering him. That one is in there for a strike, and Scope is retired. For every Orioles walk, Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield contributes $50 supporting the Be More for Healthy Babies. The Orioles have 13 walks, $650. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. One away in the sixth inning. Flaherty uh, strikeout victim twice against Archer. Making his debut 2016 for the Orioles. Ryan with the shift on against him. 1 0 delivery to him. Will miss inside for a ball. Ryan, of course, working all over the place last season, and no reason to believe it won't happen again this year. 29 year old super utility player for the Orioles. 2 0 pitch will be fouled off. First base, second base, shortstop, third base, right field. Made starts in all of those and innumerable times came on later in ball games, defensive uh, purposes. Left handers 2 1 delivery to him, and that'll catch the inside corner. Uh, Ryan Flaherty, uh, super utility player, gets an opportunity to play sometimes. <laughs> Some tough uh, pitchers to face. So going to face Archer, his first start of the season, and now this lefty coming in, throwing some gas. And a full count, three balls and two strikes from Romero. <laughs> Romero going deep on the first two hitters that he faces out of the bullpen. Three-two delivery on the way, and a towering pop-up at the mound. First base side. And it'll be handled by Morrison, and there are two down. This week only T Mobile customers can get a free season long subscription to MLB TV Premium. Go to T Mobile 
dot com slash MLB and sign up now. You can catch every moment on America's fastest growing LTE network. Rickards got a couple more hits. He said in all four ball games, he is two for three in this game against the 25 year old lefty out of the Dominican. And the pitch will be taken on the outside corner for a strike. Romero last year, 23 games at Tampa Bay, ended up 0 2, all out of the bullpen, 39 hits, 30 innings. He had played a one game in the majors prior to that that was in 2013. So now back into a bullpen that's redesigning itself. Breaking ball that'll miss down low and a 2 1 count on record. Now we've been talking all along Rickard not afraid to work a count. He uh, feels very comfortable with two strikes and his ability to put the ball in play. So uh, not intimidated and not in a rush by any means when he steps in the box. Two one delivery the inside out. Well this Tampa Bay team that lives and dies on its pitching last year. Their starters were ninth. In ERA. In the first season for Kevin Cash. Managing their bullpen though was third. This year the bullpen not quite so set. And their starters seemingly a little more set at least in rotation wise. Ground ball will go to short Miller. So a quality inning there three up and three down. We will go to the seventh first of three this weekend against the Rays the Orioles up. Minnesota, Florida, the spring home of the Orioles, a destination for culinary adventure from fresh local seafood to an eclectic array of world class cuisine. Savor the flavors of Sarasota Restaurant Week. It's going to be June 1 through the 14th. Go to SavorSarasota.com. So Manny Machado, long ball of the ball game, couple on the year. Scope gets his first of the season. Chris Davis has got two on the year, one here tonight. Nolan Reimold, his first of the season. As the Orioles pounding away, all of them coming off the starter, Chris Archer. Now, Weeders with that big RBI, the 10 pitch at bat, and of course, extending his hit streak, now 11 games. Now, up to the pitchers to hold it where it is. Brad Miller. As struck out and popped out, he'll go after the first pitch and foul it away as we go to the seventh inning. Six, ten, and O oh for the Orioles, one, five, and O oh for the Rays. Each team has left four on base. O oh one delivery. Miller on a grounder. Scope. One down. 
Birds are going to return to Oriole Park on Tuesday April 19 when they will begin the three game series against the defending division champion Toronto Blue Jays. Each game in the midweek series begins at 7.05 so don't miss out. Early season showdown coming up. Good seats available at Orioles.com or 888-848-BIRD. Sousa base hit and he is struck out. Shift on infield. Takes the big cut and misses. Sousa last year only 212 off left handers and he had 99 at bats against lefties. Surprising number. 0 1 delivery and that'll be up high. One ball, one strike count. Well, Souza coming up through, uh, known as a power hitter, but uh, one of those typical power hitters nowadays. That, yeah, he'll run into one, hit the long ball, but the strikeouts can pile up. Had a ton of them last season. He's off to a really good start this year. Some question in spring training as to whether or not he would be with the ball club on opening day or whether they would send him down and uh, a little more time at Triple A. Right. And he obviously has had a great start here. Swing and a miss. The strikeouts, as Mike says, uh, that's been the problem that they worry about. Can he put the ball in play enough? Well, he's here, and we'll see. Yeah, in 110 games, he had uh, 144 punch outs last mm -hmm. year. Two and two. McFarland working his second inning of relief. Another ground at a short. Manny Machado. And open up our Major League Notebook, a very special day in baseball. 1974, Hank Aaron hit his career 715, passing the Babe, breaking that all time mark. And in 75, Frank Robinson made his debut as the MLB's first black manager, player manager for the Indians. And in his first at bat in that game, he hit a home run as the player manager. And Frank, of course, great years with the Orioles. So a couple of very important milestones. On this date. Pitch taken. One of them, of course, to never be forgotten, Hank Aaron. There's the blast that put him on top ahead of the babe and the uh, memorable run around the base paths with a couple of fans coming out and yeah. the game held up. And Pretty amazing, right? Uh, probably one of the greatest moments in baseball history. Yeah. I mean, the past Babe Ruth. Um, man, oh man. It was at that time one of those marks for years they said would never be broken. Right. 0 2 delivery on the way, and that is going to miss down low. Kevin Kiermeyer, two down, nobody on. He has hit into a double play, and he is grounded out. Hank Aaron has been one of baseball's great ambassadors ever since retiring from the game. Ground ball back to the mound. McFarland's got it, and a good inning. He retires the side in order. And on this Friday night here at Oriole Park at Camden Yard, seventh inning stretch time, Orioles on top 6 1.
stretch time. The Orioles have the six to one lead. Gary Thorne and Mike Bordick with you. You wanted my scarf, but I wouldn't <laughs> give it up. Uh, about everything's gone right for the Orioles in this ball game. Yeah, great start from Chris Tillman. You know, coming back on three game, uh, days rest. Uh, T.J. McFarland's all, all he's done is roll out six ground ball outs, it's coming in relief, and the power's here. Yeah. Orioles bats are hot tonight. Well, we wanted to make a special note. I had the, the occasion this week to visit the UB Blake Institute here in Baltimore, and a photography exhibit. Three generations of the Phillips families. The exhibit will run through the end of April. I urge you to get down and see. There at 847 North Howard Street. That is the front cover of the program that they have for this photography exhibit. Inside there, are some of the pictures, including yes, that is Louis Armstrong backstage. It's all about Baltimore, the history of Baltimore, by a family that's taken the pictures of Baltimore for a long, long time. And what surprised me the most is two pictures that are in that exhibit. One is Jackie Robinson, 1948, in his first locker. A picture I've never seen before. And then the Negro League team, the Elite Grays of Baltimore, a team picture that has Joe Black and Junior Gilliam are both in that picture. That's in the exhibit. It's a wow. great exhibit. Really nice. You'd like it. I should go. I good think baseball I will stuff. Go. Yeah. Absolutely. It, and it's free. You just leave a donation if you would like to. It's on North Howard Street. And uh, the UB Blake Cultural Center is what it's called. UB Blake, of course, the great piano player who uh, came from Baltimore. Very nice. So hope you'll take it in. We go to the bottom half of the seventh inning. Nolan Reimold, the home run his last time up. He has struck out and hit into a double play. The Orioles seemingly well on top in this ball game. And the pitch will be taken for a strike. Romero working his second inning of relief work for Archer. Yeah, you'd love to say they have this game uh, completely under control, but you know this Tampa team. Talk about you know their power starting to come back a little bit. The additions to their lineup, the 15 runs they've scored this year, 10 of them have come from home runs. Seven home runs they've hit. So uh, you know they're a dangerous offense. They are come from behind ball club. That one got a piece of Conger on the foul ball. Count goes two balls and two strikes from Romero. Reimold, Manny Machado, and Chris Davis. Two two delivery on the way and fouled off. The Orioles, of course, with the schedule against Tampa Bay, an unusual one last year. The Orioles won the season series ten games to nine, as we said, but here in Baltimore, only six games are played. And the Orioles won only two. But because of the uh, social disruption here in the city and what was going on, uh, the, the Orioles had a three game series switch from Baltimore to Tampa Bay. So they ended up with the majority of the games down there and did not get in the full complement here last season. They actually played better down there. Yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah. Taking the series because of the wins they got at the uh, drop. Popped up in the air to first base, Morrison. And he's got it. Reimold is retired. That'll bring up Manny Machado, our PNC inside the numbers. Most home runs by players under 24 years old, all time for the Orioles. Boot Powell leading the way with 88. Eddie Murray, 79. Cal Ripken, Jr., 74. And Manny Machado coming through with his 70th home run off Archer, a slider on the heart of the plate and he powders this baseball deep left field. Andy Machado expected to have another monster offensive year last year 35 homers 20 stolen bases. The Manny with the one for three in this ball game one down and nobody on. Ground ball towards short it'll be played by Miller. Speaking of the bright young stars I saw a note on Bryce Harper today he's 23 years old he's got 99 home runs so he's got a chance at his 100th home run you know could be this weekend if he gets it Harper would be the eighth youngest player to reach the 100 home run mark and the names in front of him are Ott Canigliaro Eddie Matthews a rod. Andrew Jones, Miguel Cabrera, and Johnny Bench. So uh, he'll be 
joining an exclusive list of young players with a hundred or more home runs at a very young age. One oak out on Chris Davis. Chris a couple of walks. He has scored all three times to the plate. A home run is second. Came in the second inning. In case you are wondering, I had forgotten. The Orioles last year had a ball game with eight home runs against the Phillies. They had a five homer game against KC, and they had six four home run games last year. Davis with the big cut at 90 miles an hour in the fastball and a one ball two strike count. A big arm right here from uh, Romero. Good fastball starting to mix in some secondary pitches. Interesting to see how Kevin Cash will play the bullpen here since Archer went only five. Do you leave Romero in and ask him to go long? Save the rest of the pen, which it looks like he will. So Daniel's up in the bullpen. You don't want to obviously blow the bullpen out in the first game of the series. Pitch taken down low. Of course, the other option is you just kind of get a number of pitchers in and they'll be still ready to go tomorrow. Yeah. Well, I think they used a lot of arms in that uh, Toronto series. Might be setting up just like the Orioles are doing right now, hoping TJ McFarlane can you know, get maybe one more inning out of him. The Tampa team uh, taking some criticism last couple of years for the overuse of their bullpen. I think most teams are real careful about that, but Showalter certainly not wanting to put his bullpen arms in harm's way, but geez. Towering fly ball to right. Says is there, and he will put it away. So the Orioles go down in order here in the seventh inning. We go to the eighth. The Orioles on top, and McFarland coming back out. By Miller Light. How about back in the first inning? Forsyth with a single, but Chris Davis taking one away, stepping up, keeping the ball fair. Now the shift is on, so Flaherty is the pivot man. There's a good line creating that nice throwing lane. Look at Ryan Flaherty standing in there, turning the double play. He's a third baseman, mind you, in this ball game. Very rare. Three, five, three. Double play well done a lot of communication communication has to be done on that play prior obviously to the play being executed did it like they do it every day and you don't <laughs> make practice it but even that's not done very often McFarland trying to get through three innings he's given up only one hit faced only one over the minimum. Hank Conger the catcher at the plate Conger is grounded out twice to third and this one he lifts in the air to left field record gets over there and we'll put uh, Rymel rather gets over and puts it away one down in the eighth inning 
Well, TJ looking good. We talked about that ground ball percentage up around 65% uh, ground ball rate. And, uh, first six outs he recorded were all on the ground. That's the first fly ball out. Brian Mattis uh, rehabbing, uh, getting ready to join the Orioles. Could be as early as Sunday. He worked uh, an inning in tonight's ball game, gave up nothing, had one strikeout, worked on the seventh, gave up uh, one hit, one run, a couple of strikeouts in that ball game. So looks like he's ready to go. Yeah. Good news. You know, getting uh, the arms healthy. Gosman's close to coming back as well. And Kevin then, is here with the ball club. Yeah. And then it's uh, decision making time once again for the Orioles. Gosman is scheduled to pitch tomorrow night, Miners. And again, Buck Schoel has said if the weather's a problem, they're not going to take any chances, and he would just move on to the next day. So they'll see what the weather looks like. Could not hold up on the swing. Got him. He went around on it. Forsyth is down two away. Well, TJ doing a nice job right now. Got the hitters a little bit in between, starting to mix up his pitches. 91 mile an hour fastball up at the top of the zone and Forsyth, one of the most consistent players, very rarely gets caught in between. Always quality at bats. He gets fooled there. Two down. Morrison has had a base hit. Call out on strikes, hit into a double play. Is it the U.S. Open swing on that one? <laughs> He's got fooled on that pitch. A good one by McFarland again. 0 1 count. Comes back with a little more on it at 91 and an easy 91. One ball, one strike. Yeah, TJ gets really nice movement on that fastball. Boring in here to Morris and the lefty. Shift on and a shattered bat. That's got a squibbler. Tough play. Manny Machado guns it. Got him. Orioles D, they're on to it tonight. A one, two, three inning. McFarland, great job. And a real good D behind them. Orioles up. Bring in the lumber. And boy, did the Orioles do that tonight. That's Jonathan Skelp, followed by Reimold and Machado. All coming in one inning as the Orioles delivered three home runs in the inning, four in the ball game. Yellowwood. Bring in the lumber. And a 6 1 lead as a result, there's your line. As we go to the bottom half of the eighth inning, uh, Xavier Cedeno now and take a look at his pitch arsenal last season. The fastball 45 percent of the time, and he actually throws a rare four seam fastball. It's a cut fastball, his go to pitch, breaking ball, a slider, and a curve. So movement on everything, occasional change up in there. Very solid year last year between the Nationals and Tampa Bay with a 2 3 5 earned run average, picking up the four wins. 47 punch outs in 46 innings. 
Good job by Romero. Couple of innings, one strikeout. He did not give anything up. 17,304 on hand. 17,304 here at the ballpark for the first of three against Tampa Bay. Here's Mark Trumbo. Trumbo takes the pitch in there for a strike. Couple of hits, two singles, and three at bats in the ball game. Uh, Trumbo now has picked up uh, seven hits in 14 at bats. So he's getting on base. Working behind Chris Davis. He gets one that comes down and in and eats him up there in an 0 2 count. And Trumbo uh, picking up the base hits. A couple times he's let the bat head fly, just missing uh, some mistakes. But in batting practice today, I was watching him. He took a ball right off the batting eye, straight away center field, about halfway up. I've only seen one player do that, and that was uh, in a game, Daryl Strawberry. It went straight away center field monster shot and Trumbo it was a line drive off the batter side of center field this guy has amazing pop I can't wait for him to get into a couple here at Camden Yards see how far they go one ball two strike count he hit 40 points higher against lefties than righties last year down to third base this time it's a fair ball deep Longoria and makes the play and Trumbo is retired. Well, in our Major League Notebook on the You Can Look It Up page, the Cardinals have suffered three consecutive losses to start the year. It's the first time since 97 that's happened. They lost their first six then. The Cubs are trying to start the season 4 0 for the first time since 95. And uh, for the Cubs, you can see an 11 game regular season win streak going back to last year. And the Dodger pitchers started out great, but allowed 12 runs in the final four innings yesterday against the Giants. They had not allowed a run in the first 31 innings. As they say of this game, just wait till tomorrow. Yeah, right? Wow. <laughs> it is a crazy game. Everybody gets brought back to earth, you yep. know? Matt Wieters, a couple of hits, RBIs, picking up singles to do it, and he uh, struck out. One ball, one strike count. Inside shot, Longoria. Two down. Well, this Sunday, this Sunday, don't miss the kids' opening day. The Rays are here, the 135 game, and the first 7,500 fans who are 14 and under are going to get that special Eat Sleep Orioles t shirt. Then the kids get to run the bases after the game and throughout the day. Young Oriole fans will have special activities, including a chance to take the field with the team in pregame festivities. Kids will be selected at random. There's the T-shirt the kids are going to get. For more info, Orioles.com/kids. Two down, Pedro Alvarez. The DH after his first hit as an Oriole with the 0 for three in this ball game. 0 for 11 to start the year. Sedeno with that deep drop coming to the set position into the shift it goes. Forsyth is there. He'll make the play and the Orioles are retired in order. The Orioles are three outs away from starting this season four and oh. Brad Brock the pitch.
Cardinals baseball on Masson brought to you by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. Gary Thunder, and Mike Bordick, Oriole Park at Camden Yards, the site. And the Orioles have a 6 1 lead in this ballgame. Tillman, the pitcher of record, a run on four hits over five. Archer gave up six runs, 10 hits in five for the Rays. And Brad Brock now in to try to clean this up. Take a look this season as pitch arsenal and fastball 71% of the time. Real good, mid 90s with the heater. Crossbody delivery, breaking ball, the slider, change up 17% of the time. The turbo change. He's been in two games, four punch outs, two walks in his two innings of work. Good job by McFarland. Three innings, a strikeout, and one hit. Fouled off down the line and right, Evan Longoria. Longoria, the home run in the first inning with the early lead that did not last and their only run. He has popped out it into a fielder's choice since that first inning. Tampa Bay has had one runner reach second base, and that was in the sixth. They have not had a runner beyond second base since the first inning. Yeah, Chris Tillman really settled in after the first inning. This uh, double play there in the second, and then he just had all his stuff working. Rymold, long run, and we'll put it away. Visit massinsportscom slash care first to vote for tonight's care first live fearless player of the game. Live fearless with the name trusted for over 75 years. Care first, Blue Cross Blue Shield. What do you got tonight? Chris Davis, another good game. A couple walks, three runs scored. Home. Got a lot of choices. Yeah. I like Chris though, but the uh, the two walks. I mean, that's great to see him doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Getting on base, both times scoring, and the only two walks the Orioles had in the game. Right. And they both scored. Yeah. Great D again. Yep. And that pitch will be taken down low for a ball, Dickerson. We were checking uh, as to whether or not McFarland could get a save. You work three innings out of the bullpen, you're eligible no matter what the score was when you came in, but you got to finish the game. So he is not finishing with Brad Brock on the mound, so he can't be credited with a save. 1 0 pitch. Man. Dickerson. <laughs> Making us hurt up here tonight with the swings he takes. Yeah, good change up from Brad Brock and the aggressive hitter in Dickerson. He lets it fly. Look how far out in front he is. A nice finish. Yeah. Mm. Corey Dickerson, one ball, one strike delivery to him. And will miss. Double in the first inning. Couple of ground ball outs. Corey Dickerson, 26 years old, Meridian, Mississippi, his home. Born and still lives there. Two ball, one strike count. Brad Brock away on that one, and the count will go to three and one. Detroit, of course, with the victory of the Yankees, who told you earlier, shutting them up for nothing today. Red Sox still playing there in Toronto, trailing by one, seven to six in the seventh. Did you see the review in the Yankee uh, Detroit game today? I did not. There was a double play. And uh, they didn't review because of the slide. They reviewed because the second baseman didn't touch second base. What did you think? They get it, it right? It was the right call. Absolutely. Absolutely the right call. You have to make that known. I mean, they're gonna be, it'll be interesting this year. When you have that play at second base, Trying to turn the double play. Each manager's got an opportunity to challenge, but they both have got to do it. You can't have one and then the other manager decides, okay, now it's my turn. You got to do it together. Yeah. Or the second manager can't. Pitch is taken down low for a ball. A 1 0 count. Jennings a walk. And struck out in the ball game as well, and then grounded out 6 3 in his last at bat. Check swing. Count goes to two and zero. Oh. Sometimes some of the toughest games to finish for a pitcher are these kind, because the ball game seemingly has been over for a long time. It's not. It never is. But you get lulled into this, and then you're trying to throw strikes and just get the out, and yeah, the pressure's off, and you just want to finish. Two zero oh delivery, and that'll be outside. And Brock falls behind three and zero. Oh. 
and, and especially uh, Brad Brock kind of worked himself into more high leverage situations last season. So uh, not used to coming in with the you know, margin as it is right now. And that'll be a strike. It'll catch the inside corner. Miller waiting on deck. And now the Oriole closer, Zach Britton. Three ball, one strike delivery on the way. Rip foul. Long foul ball. Three ball, two strike count. Game two tomorrow night. 6.30 for O's Extra, 7 o'clock the ball game. We'll get a look at Mike Wright as the Orioles starter and Drew Smiley, the left hander, against the Orioles. 3 2, runner not going, came back and got him. Brock gets the strikeout. Good fastball here from Brad Brock. Exploding up and in. Hit the spot Weeders wanted, but uh, you see the life Brad Brock possesses there. Two down. One more to go for the Orioles. Delivery with a runner going. Miller will foul it back. And we remind you again tomorrow night, it'll be right against Smiley. Our coverage on Mass and 2, 6.30 O's Extra, presented by Southwest, followed by our game coverage at 7. All the access you need right here on Mass. A nice matchup tomorrow. Mike Wright, of course, the real good spring training. So get an opportunity to start start tomorrow. Runner going again, so Dickerson will come back. They're not trying to hold him. Oriole fans, 17,300 plus on their feet. Nice <laughs> Two thousand eleven, the last time the Orioles had a four and zero start. Pitch will be taken inside. Runner will go down to second base. The old defensive indifference, and a one ball, two strike count. Four homer ball game, all against the starter. Chris Archer, four run, five hit, fifth inning. Ground ball towards first base. Brock trying to get over to cover and dies, and that's the ball game. And the Orioles are four and zero. Oh. Tillman will get the win, one and zero. Oh. Archer takes the loss. He is zero oh and two for Archer now. He is zero oh and five in his last eight starts. That is a career high. And for the Orioles, all the talk of that power. Came to fruition in this ball game, particularly in that fifth inning. We'll be back with one of the stars of this ball game. The Orioles win it six-one.